Welcome to the Art and Craft Alchemist. I'm an artist and art teacher, and this is Wilbur, I'm boring him already as you can see. <laughs> um, this is an art and craft blog designed to show you how to use basic household materials to create art. I'm just aware at the moment many of you may have limited access to art materials, so this blog is designed for you. I really feel for those of you stuck at home trying to entertain your children and I only have him to contend with. Um, for my first tutorial, we're going to be making stained glass or, or window art, paper, paper window art, and um, you're gonna need cooking oil, plus a few other materials, but cooking oil is the magic ingredient. Please let me, ha let me know how you get on. I'd love to see your photographs. Um, any feedback would be great. I hope you enjoy. To give you an idea of the kind of outcomes you can create using this technique, I thought I'd show you a few of my examples. You can see how beautifully they illuminate with the light behind them. This is a print taken from this piece, and this was made by uh, this piece in particular was made by photocopying my original drawing, photocopying it in sections and putting it together. And the only reason I did that is because I wanted to keep my original drawing. Here's my original drawing. And to give you an idea of how it would have turned out if I'd worked over the original Sharpie marker pen drawing, it would have, hopefully you can see that, it would have come out like this and I really like this effect because all the food colouring colours sort of blend along with the, the marker pen and I just think it's a really beautiful effect. These pieces are photocopies from my original drawing and what I've done is I've just freehand drawn in the plants using coloured sharpies and then worked over with the cooking oil and they illuminate really beautifully. I've got a very naughty dog who's got hold of a kitchen roll. Hopefully that's my last kitchen roll puppy. I'll just show you how beautifully they illuminate. Hopefully you can see they come to life in the light. I cheated a little bit with this piece because I photocopied my original drawing of my butterfly and then just worked over in different colours of food colouring. You can use inks, coloured inks, um, but the food colouring is, is really translucent and works really well with light. The only reason I haven't put these behind glass in front of glass is because um, it's very difficult to photograph or film them well, but they, they light up beautifully. This piece is a print, which turned out particularly well, <coughs> taken from this piece. And the beauty of this technique is you get two for the price of one. You get your original art piece and then you can take a print from that piece. Hopefully this has been helpful and I can't wait to see what you get making. Hello, welcome to my first tutorial on making paper stained glass window art. The materials that you're going to need for this project are paper, preferably cartridge paper, you don't really want a paper with a shiny surface, scissors, a sharpie or marker pen, at least one paintbrush, pencil, food colouring, and the magic ingredient, cooking oil. So we're going to start by me showing you how to make a symmetrical design. I chose the NHS logo. Thank you NHS, we love you. And what you're going to need is you're going to need a folded bit of paper. So I folded this bit of paper in half, folded in half, and working along this edge you're going to create 
half of your design. Um, other shapes that you can do, that you that I've made are flower shapes, heart, um, butterfly, of course. Um, I don't know if you can see this, but that was sort of a stained glass window shape. So we'll start by drawing out my rainbow shape with a basic outline on there. Now for sake of making it a bit quicker, I did actually draw it out earlier on. So once I've spent a decent amount of time on that, it should look something like that. And then what I'm going to do next is cut that shape out. unfold it and then I would what I would do next is just draw the other side so it would end up looking something like that um, equally if you don't want to do something symmetrical and you're a bit more confident with um, with drawing you can um, work uh, freehand and these are some examples of my drawings that was just a drawing hit done of from the internet of um, a greenhouse, butterfly of course, working from a real butterfly, an image of a real butterfly, larger, more ambitious piece, stained glass window design. So you can work from your design as is, but what you might want to do, if you wanted to make a bigger, more ambitious piece, you could actually take your stencil Sorry, take your piece and use it as a stencil and repeat the image by drawing round it. I don't know if you can actually see that, it's not very clear on here. Hopefully you can. Um, so just a case of putting your template down and drawing round it. But like I said, you don't necessarily have to do this, it's just if you want to make a bigger more ambitious piece. I'm going to draw around that. Hopefully you can see that. I'm drawing around. Gosh, okay. And there we go. I'm going to try and make that a bit clearer. Hopefully you can see that design bit clearer just to repeat design um, actually how I managed to get the patterns on this is you can see I just drew I just basically drew around a circular template in this case it was a plate um, to get my design and obviously dividing it with a ruler to simplify the drawing process for younger children and those who are less confident with drawing you can actually just use household objects like jars obviously be careful if you're working with small kids and glass but you can draw around these shapes anything that you've got around the house cardboard small little cardboard boxes this is a plastic box cookie cutters um, stencils and you can go straight in to drawing your shapes with a marker pen um, as long as you don't mind them maybe getting a little bit of marker pen on them so I'm just going to draw a shape, a basic shape, and I might get some circles in there also. Drawing around that. I'm just playing around with a random pattern at the moment. Get my cookie cutter. I think I might get one of those. Got a star cookie cutter. Go draw around that. Okay. 
There we go, just some basic shapes. Um, and then you might want to work in with a ruler or more patterns and just have a play with it really. I'm gonna work from there and bring those out. But the design and how you put it together is completely up to you. Um, another th really fun thing to draw around, um, I was producing this design recently and just a bit of fun really, I actually took a real banana and I drew around it. Um, so <laughs> any, any found objects around the house, obviously uh, within reason, um, you can use. Going back to the original rainbow design, you can see I've started working over the lines with marker pen. The best way to do this, I find, is to use the natural curve of your hand. Don't worry if your, your um, hand is a bit wobbly, it doesn't need to be perfect. Because what happens is the cooking oil softens the line and the colour starts to spread out a bit. So it doesn't need to be perfect. So keep on working over those bits. Okay. In. So yeah, working with it, that that curve. If you've got a straight ed edged object, or a, better yet, a ruler, that's perfect. You start to fold and draw in the straight edges of the ruler, just gives you more control. Mustn't forget these bits. Now you've got your finished design. Now on for the magic bit, the bit that I've really been looking forward to. So working on a wipeable surface, you're gonna get your cooking oil and start applying it over your design. Already it's kind of starting to soften the marker pen. And what this is doing is it's making the paper translucent. So if you hold it up into the light, you can see through it. So I'm gonna work all over the whole piece. Almost there. Lovely. Now all I'm going to do is just get rid of the excess with a bit of kitchen towel. Wipe that off, oh gosh. You can see how the marker pen smudges a little bit. Just keep working with the excess. Okay. 
Now for the exciting bit. If you hold it up into the light, you can probably, hopefully, just about see, hopefully you can see, I don't know if you can actually see, that you can, you can just about see, sorry, the light in here is quite bad, but you can see how you can kind of just see my hand and how the papers become translucent. Okay, so the next stage is to paint in between the lines of the rainbow with food colouring. I've already made a head start with that, as you can see. So um, I managed to get hold of some quite fancy food colouring um, bottles. Uh, the great thing about these is you can just squeeze them out, but obviously also you can get the supermarket brand, which is just as good. So I'm going to squeeze out the next colour, which I think should be blue. Pop that out and squeeze that out, pop that on the surface. What I love about this process is that you're not just going to get this as an outcome but also you're going to get a print from this and both of those react in light so it's sort of two for the price of one. I'll fill these in. I'm just working it up to the edges. You, it sort of gets quite thin in places, so you've just got to kind of keep on working over. I'm going to I'm going to try and do it as quickly as possible, but as neatly as possible. Just painting in those lines. It looks a bit a bit like um, enamel at the moment. It's got that sort of shiny quality and the bright colours. Keep going with the blue. Obviously if you've only got one paintbrush you can just keep washing in between. Going. You can already see where the marker pen started to bleed out into the colour, which is another aspect of it I really like. Ready to go in with the next colour. I'm just going to bring it a little bit up to the edge there. It doesn't quite seem to want to go. Right, next colour will be violet. Some colours go on a little easier than others. I really like how the yellow, I don't know why, but the yellow seems to go on really nicely. Probably worth mentioning that you could also use inks to do this, um, but I don't find they work as well. Um, for some reason the food colouring is quite translucent um, and it just works a little bit better but you can use inks if that's all you've got
you can see the um, the cooking oil kind of resists a little bit so you've just got to keep on painting it over and it eventually it sort of fills in It wouldn't actually hurt to now leave that for an hour or so because what happens is it starts to thicken up the surface, the colour starts to thicken up a bit because of the cooking oil mixing, because, sorry, because of the cooking oil mixing with um, the food colouring. So it wouldn't be the worst thing in the world to leave that now for a while um, if it suited you. But that should be it by now so you can see the finished result. Um, what we're going to do now is we're going to take a print of it. So if you get a nice clean bit of paper, just pop it on over the surface of your piece. It's going to start soaking up the colour. I'm just going to tap it gently and I'm just going to run my hand over gently on the surface. So it's going to start picking up the food colouring and I'm just making sure that I'm applying a sort of gentle pressure but making sure that I'm kind of rubbing it all over. Now I find it's actually really helpful to leave that there for a minimum of at least an hour. I'll show you a print in a minute that I left overnight and it came out really really well. So really the longer you're prepared to, to leave it on there the better I think that the print will come out. So we'll just leave that there. When I come back later, I'll probably just give it another bit of a rub just to make sure that it's picked up all the colour. But this is also the next exciting bit when you see the print coming out. Right, so I'm going to go away and leave that for a bit and hopefully when I come back there'll be something really exciting to see. Okay, so it's time to reveal the print. It's been here all afternoon, so let's give it a go. That has come out pretty well. There's a little bit where it hasn't quite gone there, but that is the nature of prints. Um, you kind of got to go with it. Um, it may be that I didn't press hard enough in that area. Actually, in fact, what I did forget to do is just before I revealed it to press down on it, to rub down on the back again. So next time that is what I would do. But that I would say is pretty good and that should illuminate. Hopefully you can see with the light behind it so it's quite hard to see. That should light up really beautifully. Plus you have your original which is really lovely now and if you can hold up in the light you can see how it really works well and it has that sort of stained glass effect hopefully you can see how beautifully it lights up sorry i'm probably blinding you with this light don't whatever you do try and try and dry these off with a heat gun it's oil it's not going to work it's just going to get more liquidy um, the downside of this technique is they do take, they will dry out, but they just take quite a long time to dry out. The other thing is because you've used cooking oil, um, what'll, uh, what'll happen is that um, it'll be quite, quite greasy, so it's really difficult to get it to stick to a window. Um, blue tack doesn't work. What I advise you is that if you've got a bit of fishing wire, if you use the fishing wire or you just, or you just sit them on the window still, that works quite well, but they will be quite greasy initially and they will take a while to dry out. But look at that. That looks amazing. Really happy with that. Just get that shining through again, show you. It works really beautifully. Anyway, hopefully you found that enjoyable. Please show me, I keep saying this, please show me your creations. I'm really excited to see what you're going to get making. Bye! 
wait stop don't go anywhere I completely forgot that I was going to talk more about this print that came out particularly well that's the thing I love about art I learn new things all the time and sometimes I forget what I've learned but what I did to achieve this print was that I did rub gently on the back but I also I just remembered I also used a rolling pin so try it out with a rolling pin there's a good chance you're going to get a clearer print the other thing I want to mention is next up I'm going to be making 3D paper bugs and I really hope you're going to join me for that. Bye!